to the channel everyone. My name is Izzy Biscus and what we are doing today, we are listening to the Tortured Poets format and reviewing it after three months of it being out. So it has marinated, we have gone over it. I have listened to it so many times. I've listened to it so much. And so I know it front and back of my hand. So now we're gonna go through it and we're gonna discuss it, the songs, like what I didn't see when I first listened to it because I do have another vlog, a reaction video of me first listening to it. And I go back and watch that vlog sometimes on little moments, like different parts of the songs I wanna see my reaction to. And I just, just didn't appreciate it then. You know what I mean? So let's get started. I'm not gonna listen to every single song on the album, but I am going to listen to my favorites that are just, I think, top tier. I think all of them are amazing, but we're just gonna pick the ones that I'm really passionate about, and we're gonna go through and listen to it together. I would really love to say, my first listen to My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys, I took it for granted, completely overlooked it. This is one of my favorite, 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 favorite songs. Also, she just released the voice memo of when she was first creating this song, and it is so sad. She's like telling the person, whoever she's talking to on the phone, and she says like, something something like it's gonna be less piano sad piano it's gonna have more like beats whatever but i'm general i'm sad in general and i'm like oh my gosh like it's just it's it's painful you can hear in her voice and then there's one part of the song that she changed and it's just heartbreaking here it says he was my best friend down at the sand lot but in her voice note she says he was my best friend and that was the worst part and i'm like oh man that like it's heartbreaking so I feel like the voice note and how she changed it over what I was gonna pause and say is that it's very thematic it stays on a theme of toys child play all that and so I really appreciate the different lyrics <laughs> themes so like there's a litany of reasons why we could have played for keeps so we could have played for keeps queen of sand castles these are all child play rules of them for kids right and then in this it also says like i know i'm just repeating myself put me back on my shelf yes she can literally mean i'm just repeating myself i'm trying to talk about something that we already know what's happened like you don't need to go over it again and again but also toys if you go into the aisle of target or walmart or anything if you go look at all the toys that are on the shelf they repeat themselves so like they are literally image the same images of each other so like if you have one barbie and it's like this one version of the barbie there's like hundreds of them you know and so it's just it's really beautiful how she wrote this song and so I, I've really taken time to really enjoy it. It's so beautiful because if you think about a kid, a child, they have a favorite toy they will play with that toy until it breaks, right? So at first, you go to the store, the child picks out whatever toy it is, and then they play with it so much because it's their favorite, favorite thing. It's like having an old blanket, like a child blanket or a, a child stuffed animal, to where you keep it forever, but what, the more you play with it, the more it gets tarnished and ruined, as in your eyes. But she's like saying, like he just couldn't see me how when he first got me over time i tarnished in his eyes and did not stay exactly how he saw me even though physically i made a tarnish like life is life you know that's what she's saying it's so good i love this song <laughs>
favorite, favorite thing. And what she's saying technically like through this is just say when I'd play again. He was my best friend down at the sand lot. And that's when she changed the voice. But the first voice memo was he was my best friend. That was the worst part. Like losing your best friend. It's terrible, painful. It's not something you ever want to go through. She's saying like I felt more feelings, love, whatever it was that she felt like in this relationship playing in a role that ultimately wouldn't last like you know it, it was playing pretend for something that's not real so she felt more playing pretend with this guy in this relationship than she did with any other guy so like she's like just say when i'd come play with you again even though i know that it's fake and that it's not real i'd still play with you again because of the feelings that you brought out of me you brought me out of myself okay next song ready <laughs> so good it's so good oh my gosh now pretty baby i'm running back home to you fresh out the slam i know who my first call will be to you fresh out the interpret this with this like when she says another summer taking cover rolling thunder he don't understand me so as we keep going I really feel like it was her and Joe's relationship and how much he hid her and or not even hid her not that he was you know doing everything but she was also hiding with him as well but that was like the basis of the relationship is that they didn't really ever talk about it and I feel like Taylor back in the past would always say, you know, like, I don't need to talk about relationships, whatever. But then she started recently coming out saying, I like felt like it was something hidden. And, you know, she regretted what she did. She pretty much stated that in her some of her interviews. So another summer taking cover, hiding from the paparazzi, not really showing herself in the press, not really doing exactly what she loves to do, which is being herself, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Handcuffed to the spell I was under for just one hour of sunshine. So just one beautiful moment of bliss with her lover, whatever it is. But she was handcuffed under the spell. She didn't see it. Years of labor, locks and ceilings in the shade of how he was feeling. But it's going to be all right. I did my time. So she did her time being stuck in this relationship. I feel like she's she's related to prison. She's like, I did my time being in this relationship. So now, once I'm out, I'm running back to you. So whether it's a past relationship, whether it's herself she's running back to, however you want to interpret that. Okay, we're going to go next. Was any of it in your Jehovah's Witness suit? Let's play the smallest man who ever lived, Bridge. Let's go through it, the pain together. This, I think I realized it once the bridge started, like in my first listen, I realized, oh my gosh, like this is really powerful. Let's hear it. Like how did, let's, let's hear the message you want to give to the smallest man who ever lived. Cause she kept saying it. But like now I still get so teary eyed from the power of this bridge. A message to the smallest man who ever lived. Wasted by Never forget the smallest man 
mean like wow <laughs> like wow <laughs> that is one of the best bridges ever and it's so powerful like when it starts off with were you sent by someone who wanted me dead did you sleep with a gun underneath our bed like what were you doing why why did we have this love affair why did what was the purpose if what you did ended like you know what was it were you really oh it is so good so good okay i can't be i like cannot get over that bridge ever and her performance too now in the air tour sweeps it sweeps the ground i'm i'm a little jealous because i went to the Ares tour in atlanta april 29th and 28th and i didn't get to see torture post farm we didn't even know yeah we didn't even know it was coming out so april last year 2023 we didn't even know the new album would be out and everything so but that's okay i still got to see it on live streams and everything this song you have no idea how much this song means to me to be honest i cannot apply it to my life at all but i empathize with the writing and the story it is the most beautifully written song i think on the whole entire album so let's dive let's do a deep dive into it let's I, i'm not i don't know if i'm ready i'm gonna get teary-eyed just because it i don't know it makes me really emotional for it's just beautiful it's just such a beautiful song and written so well i just cannot believe how someone was able to write this song so let's let's do it <laughs> It hurts. It hurts going through this. Let's just say that. I don't even think I can listen to it. Like, I'm very injured. <laughs> When we know the routine of how to get back with that person and back to that past life and back to the struggle like we know it so easily we know the back we know it so well so who is going to stop us and also like we started talking about fate and stuff in the song too and it's like who's really going to stop us when we literally believed it was fate if you know she's saying if you know it in one glimpse that's legendary that's a legendary love like i like to say that this is about joe i feel like there's no reason this should be about maddie because of how in-depth it is so like if you know it in one glimpse it's legendary so like if when you know you know in one instance of looking at someone you can literally call that a legendary love you know that's what she's saying and then it says okay then from that you and i go from one kiss to getting married like we we, when you know you know that's what she's saying is that in this relationship she she knew she was like when i when you know you know and she was there she was at that moment in her relationship where she's like i know i know this is it this is in game and then that beautiful like you're still alive, but you're killing time at the cemetery where things go to be buried. Dead things go to be buried. Never quite buried, but like still alive even though you're dead. Killing time. The way she writes that, it's just so good. About a million times. You said I'm the love of your life about a million times. Now let's go. Now it's like, okay, so now here's the next verse. Each verse in this song just gets deeper and deeper and tells a story and it just, it's incredible. It doesn't stop, it never ends. Who's gonna tell me the truth when you blew in with the winds of fate and told me I reformed you. When okay, I have to stop it there. The next part is my favorite part, but I need to go over this. What I said, like, you know, in one glimpse it's legendary you and I go from one kiss to getting married. Like, it's in the storybooks. It's, you know, it's fate that we're supposed to be together. And so she's saying it again. Like, you blew in with the winds of fate. Like, you came into my life, and that was fate, how we met, how we started our relationship. He told her that she reformed him. Reform, like, you always, like, relate that to artistry and paintings and everything. And so the next verse, she talks about impressionist paintings. And impressionist paintings, they're artists that 
rebelled against traditional art. So in the sense that they started painting about everyday life instead of historical events or classical subjects in an instance. So she's talking about impressionist painting. So that's like so specific to this. In the lyrics, your impressionist paintings of heaven. So everyday life, relating it to heaven, talking about their relationship and how amazing like it feels like heaven because of the winds of fate, because it's legendary, the one glimpse and everything. And the paintings turned out to be fakes. They were deception, they weren't real. And so we're starting to get this little instance in the song from there, we're like, oh, okay, so everything seems beautiful and perfect, but there's just like little slips of, but wait, no, it's not, it was, it was false, it was not real. We are reformed, you when your impressionist paintings of heaven turned out to be fakes. But you took me to hell too, and all at once, the ink bleeds. A con man sells a fool, a get love quick scheme. A con man sells a fool, a get love quick scheme. So she's now she's saying like, he was the con man. Like he wasn't, he was, it is so incredible. Okay. Okay. What we thought was for all time was momentary. All those plot twists and dynamite. Mr. Steal your girl and make her cry. He said, I'm the love of your life. Mr. Steal your girl, then make her cry. I wrote. Oh, I wrote. Now let's get to the bridge. You should talk to me under the table, talking rings and talking cradles. I wish I could unrecall how we almost had it all. Dancing phantoms on the terrace. Are they second hand embarrassed that I can't get out of bed? Cause something counterfeit. every time the I wish I could unrecall how we almost had it all dancing phantoms on the terrace are they secondhand embarrassed that I can't get out of bed because something that is fake counterfeit is dead so it's not even like something real died it's something that wasn't real it's off oh, because we were talking about the impressionist paintings weren't real the fate that whole entire prophecy that wasn't real with the relationship she thought it was she thought it was gonna be, you know, when you know, you know. Nope. Nope. Are they secondhand embarrassed that I can't get out of bed because I'm in bed because of something that is counterfeit is dead? It was unnecessary, should have let it stay buried. Oh, what a valiant roar. What a plan goodbye. The coward claimed he was a lion. I'm cold. What a valiant roar. What a bland goodbye contrast of those and then the coward claimed he was a lion again con man impressionist paintings not real he was a coward but he claimed that he was the lion and courageous and fearless all that um and then when she brings up the lyric right here Coming through the braids of lies, it reminds me of Evermore completely, and fo this is drama folklore, all that music and everything. It's like I'm coming through the braids of lies. Like what was real, what wasn't? Crazy. And then her saying, "I'll never leave," like saying, "I'll never, I'll never leave you." Never mind. Never mind that. And then our field of dreams engulfed in fire. How sad is that? And also, I feel like that really relates to her whole entire lover house. So all the houses with the different eras in the rooms, those are her field of dreams, right? And then putting them all, matching them all on fire, like during the eras tour, engulfed in fire, that it has a lot of symmetry, I feel like. And then, it's, then it says, I'll still see you until I die. You're the loss of my life. You gotta move on, because I'm gonna just continue being sad. Then next. You hologram stumbled into my apartment and changed into goddesses, villains and fools. So she's literally talking
talking about her life. So pretend, doesn't matter how long it spans, but she changed into goddesses. She was on the cover of magazines. She was doing photo shoots. She was the highlight of Victoria's Secret fashion show, right? She turned into villains. She turned into rep era. People hated her during that season. She turned into fools. So, you know, like her losing her right to her records and everything not saying that's a fool and everything but like she was clowned then you know so like all these things in life like you go through all these stages you turn into all these things you change plans you change lovers you change outfits you change your rules like what you believe in because you grow up and whatever and she's saying like all of this was happening and the guy that she's talking about writing this song about he watched it he just sat and watched her life play out and didn't do anything about it. And then I love this part of it. This one lyric, it's like, back to the moment I crashed into you, like so many wrecks do, too impaired by my youth to know what to do. Saying pretty much, I think there's like an Adele, Adele song pretty much saying the same thing, where it's saying like, please forgive me, I was young and foolish and didn't know what to do. This is pretty much her way of saying it too. Like, I crashed into you, we had this thing, whatever it was, and I was way too impaired by my youth. I was way too young or naive to know even what to do about it. But like looking back on it in hindsight, I would know what to do now in a way. But like that's hindsight, you know, that's not reality. Back to the moment I crashed into you like so many next to compare by my youth to know what to do. that lyric too i feel like it's super underrated but can we watch our phantoms like watching wild horses also phantoms again i just put that two and two together wild horses if you like watch videos or like see them they're so majestically beautiful and free like running together on the hillside wherever they are but like if you actually went and tamed the horse and brought it to your farm whatever the freedom and the beauty of that is stripped away a bit when you tame something and so she's like saying like watching wild horses cooler in theory it's a theory to be like oh my gosh this wild horse like it's still gonna be free and beautiful and majestic so let's take it so that theory is that it's gonna stay that way but then in reality but not if you force it to be it just didn't happen so she's relating that to her relationship too she's like the relationship was cooler in theory but like if you force it to be anything it's not gonna be what you want it to be. So beautiful the way she writes that, okay? It's, I feel like I'm in AP English right now, just like <laughs> analyzing everything. That was, those were my favorite classes though, like looking really deep into everything. That explains a lot in my life, actually. Oh, this next one. One of my top fave songs. So underrated, so underrated. I love this, ready? I had died the tiniest death I spied the catch in your breath Oh, 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 oh. Northbound I got carried away As you boarded your train South, 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 south I love it. I spied the catch in your breath, the hesitancy. You spot the hesitancy. And then talking about northbound, She's going this way, he's going south, like they're they're not on the same track, you know? It's just a beautiful way of writing that. I'm afflicted by the night, no answer. I look in people's windows, in case you're at their table. What if your eyes looked up and met mine one more time? And it's beautiful because she's talking about north and southbound, the affliction, the hesitancy of the relationship, they're going different ways. And then she's also talking about two different scenes. So one scene is her outside looking inside the window. The other scene is him at the table, like having his own life. So there's two different lives and two different perspectives is what she's getting at. And so what's so beautiful about it is like, what would happen if your eyes connected to mine while we were in our two different lives? Like what, what would happen? Like that's like what ifs. So then she's like really reeling into the what ifs, like what could be, what should be, all those things. But really, they're always just on two different playing fields, if that makes sense. Like they're never ever truly connected. It's not like she's actually in the room with him. It's not like he's actually outside with her. 
So it's just it's just a beautiful way of writing the song. But also, like in reality and truth, you can literally I did this in London. I actually wrote a little mini poem about it where I was just having a broody, somber walk like outside one night. It was like a Saturday night and I was coming home from some dinner plans or some something where I was walking alone and I had my headphones in listening to some music and I was looking at people's different lives, like at the dinner tables, at houses, like house parties and stuff, and just looking inside other people's lives and everything. And so I can totally see this picture playing out. It's just really beautiful. And so what happens if we lock eyes? Like what happens if we, if our lives like meet back together? What would happen? What if? What would? It's an all an if. What if? And then it's the scenario just keeps going, like the picture of it. Ready? theme of this song I love just I just love this song I listen to it all the time <laughs> a lot of the consistency of her songs which I really appreciate on tortured pose for it is the fact of like her asking like how do you not miss me so in that song it's like does it feel all right to not know me and in the black dog that song it's like how do you not miss me when you get memories of me or you know like when you think of me how do you not miss me because of all everything we shared I love the black dog too oh my gosh we are gonna go over one more. I absolutely love this one too. Oh, it's so good lyrically. It's so good. It's themed by Peter Pan. So it's the boy who never grows up, never lands. The goddess of timing once found us beguiling. She said she was trying. Peter, was she lying? I At one point, the timing was right, everything was right, and the goddess of timing found them beguiling, and she said she was trying, but Peter, Peter, was the was she lying to us? Like, is are you still gonna come back? Like, is this, or is, is our timing still gonna get it right? He said you were gonna grow up, and you were gonna come find. He said you were gonna grow up, and you were gonna come find. He said you were gonna grow up, and you were gonna grow up then you were gonna come find me how many of us have been in relationships where it's like I really like spending time with you but I'm just not ready for a relationship right now and then like you like hold on and you hold on for this one person to come back in your life at some point this is that song for you this is like the song so go listen to it yourself so the bridge is just phenomenal and I really like how she starts off when she's like and I won't confess that I waited but I let the lamp burn I waited for you to come back to the window seal. Like, you know, Peter Pan, those themes. I did. I waited, but I can't wait anymore. Never to keep, Never to keep because he's always flying away like Peter Pan. As the men masqueraded, as men came in and out of my life, I still hope that you would return with your feet on the ground and tell me all that you've learned. Tell me all that you learned cuz love's never lost when respect is earned and you I just she I cannot believe like she writes this stuff. Love's never lost when perspective is earned. Lost and earned. Love is not lost once perspective is earned. First of all, I feel like I'm 25, so I'm like, ooh, I'm young. <laughs> because she's talking about, you know, like she's writing this song in the future and she's still young. And she's talking about like past memories of like 25, you know, I'm like, well, she's, that, that's young. But besides the point, the next layer, she said, the shelf life of those fantasies. So like imagine 
just a room full of potions, okay? Or full of groceries. You look at the expiration date, it's like, oh, 225. So you keep them, so you keep those dreams. So those are technically relating to dreams, right? So the shelf life of those dreams expire at some point. So that's what she's saying with this. She's like, okay, so that one bottle that was of me and you, that the dreams of us, it expired. It's not there. So it was just, it had a shelf life. At first we didn't think it had a shelf life at all because you said forever and you're like, I'll come back and find you once I grow up a bit. But nope, the fantasy's expired. Forgive me, Peter. Please know that I tried to hold on, hold on to the day, to the day when you were mine. But the woman who sits by the window has turned out the light. He said you were gonna grow up and you were gonna. Those are the ones I'm going over. Thank you so much for joining me and just loving Taylor and her lyrics. Her music is just it's so great. So thanks for fangirling and geeking out with me over this music and this poetry. It's so wonderful. I love doing this. I love talking about it. I know some people will say, oh my gosh, it's so crazy that you just love Taylor's music that much. But I'm like, it's so, it's beautiful. It's art. I love art. So I hope you have a great rest of your day and talk soon. Bye.